A significant amount of activity has transpired at Starbase over the past week. Starship 30 successfully completed its static fire testing, the launch pad underwent testing once again, Starship 26 is poised for static fire testing at Massey's, and Ship 29 and Booster 11 preparations for Flight 4 are in their final stages. Also, we have insights into the design upgrades SpaceX is planning to implement on the Starship launch vehicle in the near future. Join us as we delve into these latest developments. Starship 29 and Super Heavy Booster 11 prototypes continue their preparations at the build site for the upcoming wet dress rehearsal and the subsequent flight test. Ship 29's heat tile upgrade work is nearly finished, with teams working diligently to replace numerous tiles over the past few weeks. The new heat tiles, featuring improved adhesives, are crucial for ensuring Ship 29's survival during atmospheric re-entry in IFT4. Meanwhile, inspections, checkouts, and assembly verifications for Booster 11 are in their final stages inside the Mega Bay. The booster received its hot stage ring lately, marking the completion of all major installations. At the launch site, Starship 30, the ship that will be launched on the fifth integrated flight test, recently completed its six-engine static fire test, a major milestone in its test campaign. Ship 30 arrived at the launch site on May 1st and was positioned atop the test stand for the static fire testing. This ship has some visible changes on its exterior compared to its predecessor, Ship 29. One noticeable alteration is seen in the design of the heat tiles on its nose cone, featuring improved patterns and installation techniques. The Starlink antennas that downlink these stunning onboard visuals from Starship during flight have been relocated from the nose cone to the payload bay area. Several new vents have been integrated outside the liquid methane and oxygen tanks. There are now at least six vents on a ship's mid-region, all designed to release excess pressure inside the propellant tanks. Two new roll thrusters have been added to the ship to control its roll rate when in orbit. Ship 28 was rolling out of control during the coast phase of IFT-3, which prevented SpaceX from performing the in-space Raptor engine burn test. Hopefully, the new thrusters will help prevent the uncontrolled spinning of the vehicle. Moreover, the triangular camera block within the payload bay has been removed. However, the cameras responsible for capturing the onboard views seen during the flight tests remain attached to the forward flaps of Ship 30. While these visible changes are evident, there may be additional design enhancements to Ship 30 that are not externally apparent. Perhaps further updates regarding Ship 30's design improvements will be provided by Elon Musk or SpaceX ahead of the fifth flight test. Ship 30 underwent routine flap testing on the test stand the past week while it was being prepared for the static fire. These tests ensured optimal performance of both forward and aft flaps. Following nearly a week of preparation, Ship 30 was poised for its static fire test on Tuesday, May 7. Unfortunately, two consecutive attempts on that day were scrubbed due to unknown issues. The first attempts are the oxygen tank of the ship being filled with liquid oxygen to a minimal amount before detanking. It seems there may have been some issues with the propellant loading procedure. Although the subsequent static fire attempt occurring three hours later also failed, there was an improvement noted from the first one. SpaceX successfully managed to completely fill the oxygen tank this time before detanking, indicating progress in the propellant loading procedure. The next attempt took place the following day, May 8th. Propellant loading commenced at 10.45 a.m., with engine chill beginning 45 minutes later to precondition the engines for ignition. 30 minutes later, Ship 30 successfully ignited all six Raptor engines for approximately five seconds, completing its full-duration static fire test. This marked the first time the ship's engines were ignited following their installation. Ship 30 was removed from the test stand on Friday morning to return to the production site for further preparations and checkouts in readiness for its orbital launch attempt. The entire launch site infrastructure underwent testing on Tuesday, May 7, parallel to Ship 30's scrub static fire attempts. Propellant venting was observed from various locations at the site on Tuesday, indicating testing of the launch pad and tank farm components. Vigorous venting was observed from the launch mount and the launch tower, signaling testing of the plumbing that delivers propellants to the launch vehicle. Most of the launch pad infrastructures were upgraded after Flight 3 in March, and the recent checks ensured they were ready for Flight 4. A similar purge test was conducted on April 30th, primarily focusing on commissioning the newly installed horizontal storage tanks. It looks like these tanks will be used for propellant storage for Flight Test 4. Once the horizontal tanks are fully operational, SpaceX can decommission the remaining vertical storage tanks at the tank farm, 
creating space to install newly delivered heat exchangers and small bullet tanks. The launch tower's rocket catching and stacking arms underwent testing multiple times in the past week. Notably, the left arm demonstrated increased speed in its operation, attributed to the recent installation of an upgraded actuator. SpaceX plans to attempt catching the booster with the tower arms as early as the fifth integrated flight test. The actuator is vital in precisely controlling the horizontal movement of the launch tower arms, governing their opening and closing actions for rocket catching. The right arm's actuator may also be replaced soon to ensure both arms can execute the faster movements required for successful rocket catching. Once the launch pad is ready and all upgrades are complete, Ship 29 and Booster 11 will be transported to the launch site for the full stack wet dress rehearsal. A new Marine Safety Information Bulletin has been issued lately, indicating that the wet dress rehearsal may take place on May 16th. A successful wet dress rehearsal will pave the way for the fourth integrated flight test targeted before the end of May. However, even if SpaceX completes the wet dress rehearsal on time, the launch license for Flight 4 will not be available until the investigation into the mishap during Flight 3 is completed. Nonetheless, once the investigation concludes, Flight 4 may not be far behind. In a surprising development, Starship 26, which had been stationed at the Rocket Garden for the past six months, was relocated to Mega Bay 2 on Sunday, May 5th. Two days later, the new four-legged static fire test stand from the Massey's test site arrived at the build site on a self-propelled modular transporter, or SPNT. The test stand was then maneuvered into Mega Bay 2, and Ship 26 was positioned atop it. Subsequently, the SPNT carrying the test stand and Ship 26 departed the build site and returned to the Massey's site. All these actions indicate that the flame trench at Massey's is ready to host static fire testing and SpaceX is gearing up to conduct a static fire test of Ship 26 in the coming days. Starship 26 and 27 were originally built for the ship-to-ship -ship orbital refueling demo mission. Both the ships lack flaps, heat tiles, and the payload bay door. However, Ship 27 was scrapped in July last year after its common dome imploded due to a pressure drop inside the methane tank. After that, Ship 26 underwent a single-engine static fire test in October before being moved to the Rocket Garden. During its time at the Rocket Garden, Ship 26 received several stringers on its exterior, the purpose of which remains unclear. With Ship 26 now at Massey's, it is anticipated that a six-engine static fire test will be conducted in the coming days. Currently, teams are in the process of positioning Ship 26 over the flame trench and connecting it to the quick disconnect mechanism for the static fire test. The primary focus of the test will be to operationalize the new static fire test stand at Massey's, which has been under construction for several months. This test will involve bringing online the new flame trench, water-cooled flame deflector, water and propellant storage tanks, and all the propellant delivery systems. Once all systems are confirmed to be fully operational, SpaceX will transition static fire testing of Starships to Massey's. The new test stand at Massey's will enable SpaceX to conduct longer and more powerful static fire tests compared to those currently conducted at the launch site. Eventually, the static fire test stand at the launch site will be demolished to make way for the construction of the second orbital launch pad. Foundation work for the construction of Pad 2 is already underway near the test stand. Extensive soil compaction has been carried out at the site to enhance stability and load-bearing capacity. Piling work commenced several days ago, with rebars being installed inside the drilled holes. Orbital launches from this new pad are expected to commence next year. Super Heavy Booster 13, having completed its cryogenic proof testing at Massey's, returned to the build site on May 3rd. Upon arrival, the booster was transferred into the Mega Bay and positioned atop a processing stand in preparation for engine installation. Once engine installation is complete, Booster 13 will proceed with its static fire test campaign. It is scheduled to be launched alongside Ship 31 in the sixth integrated flight test. A notice of intent to prepare an environmental impact statement for Starship operations at Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39A has been released lately. The construction of the Starship launch tower at LC-39A was halted several months ago. The new notice indicates that since the completion of a 2019 environmental assessment, SpaceX has made several changes to its plans for LC-39A. Notably, SpaceX now plans to construct additional launch infrastructure, including a super-heavy catch tower, facilities for propellant generation, a water deluge system, and a landing zone and pad. 
The concept of operations has also evolved, with SpaceX proposing to launch an advanced design of the Starship and Super Heavy vehicles. Discussions are ongoing regarding a potential increase in Starship engines to 9 and Super Heavy engines to 35. Moreover, there is a proposed increase in the projected launch tempo, with SpaceX now targeting 44 launches a year from LC-39A. These changes necessitate a new environmental impact statement to address the adjusted scope. The notice highlights that only after the successful completion of the environmental review process and SpaceX meeting all FAA safety, risk, and indemnification requirements will the FAA issue a vehicle operator license to conduct Starship Super Heavy launch and landing operations from LC-39A. Generally, an environmental impact statement period is between 6 to 12 months, but whether that is the case with the Starship LC-39A remains to be seen. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. SpaceX finally unveiled its long-awaited spacesuits intended for spacewalks in low Earth orbit. The SpaceX EVA suits, short for extravehicular activity suits, draw inspiration from the existing IVA suits worn by astronauts on Crew Dragon flights to the International Space Station. However, unlike the IVA suits, these new EVA suits are tailored specifically for spacewalks. The suits will first be worn on the Polaris Dawn mission, a Crew Dragon private spaceflight mission, part of the Polaris program initiated by SpaceX, backed by billionaire Jared Isaac Mann. Isaac Mann will fly on the Polaris Dawn mission, scheduled for the summer of 2024, alongside retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Scott Kidd Partit, who will serve as the mission pilot, and mission specialists Sarah Gillis and Anna Maynon, both serving as lead operations engineers at SpaceX. During the mission, at an altitude of 700 kilometers, the four astronauts will conduct the EVA outside the Crew Dragon spacecraft, marking the first ever commercial spacewalk. Expected to last around two hours, this spacewalk will involve the crew going through a comprehensive test matrix to evaluate the performance of the EVA suits. The suits boast material enhancements and joint improvements aimed at augmenting astronauts' mobility, comfort, and protection both inside and outside the Crew Dragon capsule. Engineered to shield wearers from micrometeorites, extreme temperatures, and other space hazards, the suits also incorporate a 3D-printed helmet with a heads-up display for real-time monitoring of critical suit metrics such as pressure, temperature, and humidity. Moreover, these suits are customizable to accommodate diverse body types, ensuring inclusivity for all astronauts. SpaceX envisions integrating the EVA and IVA suits into a unified design in the future, providing astronauts with enhanced mobility, comfort, and protection throughout launch, landing, and spacewalk activities. China has successfully launched its first Long March 6C rocket, marking a significant milestone in the country's space program. The new rocket, developed by the Shanghai Academy of Spaceflight Technology, lifted off from the Taiyuan Satellite Launch Center in northern China on May 6. The rocket carried four satellites on its maiden voyage. Two of them are synthetic aperture radar satellites, while the other two are optical Earth observation satellites. All four payloads were successfully deployed into a sun-synchronous orbit 500 kilometers above Earth. The Long March 6 series was first introduced in 2015, with the original Long March 6 making its maiden unflight that year. The latest addition to this family, the Long March 6C, stands 43 meters tall, shorter than its 50-meter-long predecessor, the Long March 6A, and lacks the latter's four solid rocket boosters. The rocket's first stage is powered by twin YF-100 engines fueled by kerosene and liquid oxygen, which together generate 2,376 kilonewtons of thrust at liftoff. The second stage features a single YF-115 vacuum-optimized engine, generating 180 kilonewtons of thrust. Long March 6C will be employed to launch small and medium-sized military, civilian, and commercial satellites. The rocket has a payload capacity of up to 4,500 kilograms to low Earth orbit and 2,400 kilograms to a 500-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit. The successful launch of the Long March 6C is a testament to China's continued advancements in space technology. The nation is expanding its launch capabilities with plans to unveil several new rockets this year. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.